Hey, this is Cap, and you're watching Thorin, the only man besides Richard Lewis who somehow found a way to get both League of Legends and Dota Redditors to hate him. If you're a fan of CSGO, you might be shocked to find out that if you want to trade skins on CS Money, trade hold's not a problem. You can actually still trade, buy, and sell skins even if they have trade hold. Also, prices are lower than elsewhere because they have a constant 20% discount when you top up through the site. Now, at the Esports Industry Awards for 2019, which took place very recently, I, I've got to say I shared a lot of people's initial reaction. I was not only shocked, I was outraged. I actually immediately started thinking myself of essentially, I wouldn't necessarily say conspiracy theories, but the potential that maybe there was foul play going on, mainly because there was a few big name awards that I and others seem to get upset about. So first of all, there was PC Player of the Year, one of the most important awards at the entire show, and it was won by Booger the champion of the Fortnite World Cup, I think it was called. And he won that award over Simple, Caps, Sinatra. So Simple, arguably the best CSGO player ever, had a very good year this year. Caps, one of the greatest League of Legends players, won almost everything this year, only lost one series. And Sinatra was far and away one of the best Overwatch League players, it took place in many different stages, and then won the entire championship at the end, considered the MVP. So the idea that this was won by Booga, who essentially won one tournament, a giant one, but one tournament, and in a game with a lot of RNG and other factors, and a game that a lot of people don't even consider a big eSport. I personally don't particularly... I consider it on the fringes of eSports at best, and therefore you'd have to do something truly exceptional for me to win, like, player of the year. Like, maybe win, like, five of these things if there was that many in a year. So one of the reasons why, when I heard this particular award, I was shocked, actually, is because... I mean, the esports awards say that they're transparent and I'm involved within the process. So I'll just say, from my perspective and remembering discussions I'd had with the other judges where we talked about all the different players and what they'd done, it didn't seem to me like there were many advocates for Booga, quite frankly, among the panel. Actually, I will say I won't speak on their behalf, but I think a number of other people on the panel were shocked at this person won because if you were going to pick someone, you would pick Simple or Caps or Sinatra or one of the three at least. The idea that this guy would somehow overtake them all seems ridiculous. Then you had another individual award, PC Rookie of the Year. This is another uh, title that Booga won. And this time, he won it over Zewu, someone who actually was a contender for PC Player of the Year in my book, but finished just behind Simple in terms of CS for me. And as a result, as a rookie, absolutely far and away deserved to win this award. Unbelievable year. Then you had Console Player of the Year, where Sonic Fox won over Simp. Now, as far as I know, from talking to the people who are in Call of Duty and doing my homework, Simp had an incredible year, was much, much better relative to his game and his particular skill set than Sonic Fox was. I was actually told by many of the fighting game people it wasn't even Sonic Fox's best year. And so what happens in this scenario is when Booga wins, you think, oh, fuck, have they, have they just done this because it's Fortnite, because it's going to get all the headlines, because it's going to get real ESPN to write about it. Have they made Sonic Fox win for political reasons so he can say some bullshit about diversity and everyone can just celebrate and say how wonderful it all is rather than celebrate whether he was actually the best player or not. Then another one that I personally wasn't as mad with, but I know some people were upset with, was PC Team of the Year, or was it just Team of the Year, was won by G2 Esports, and it specifically, we're not talking about the org now, was for League of Legends. Now, I noticed a lot of other people said, how could they win if they didn't win the final championship? You know, OG won TI, Astralis won the two majors, like San Francisco Shock won so many stages, and then won the actual Overwatch League playoffs. The point there is, I would say, most of the people saying that weren't actually League of Legends specialists, and I will say personally, I think it's defensible that G2 won. They did win MSI, no Western team's ever done anything like that before. They won both the LEC splits, and they not only defeated monsters like SK Telecom, but they only lost one series all year, and yes, it was the world's final, but they got to the world final. They had essentially the best year, you could argue, perhaps any team ever's had in League of Legends. I think you could make a case if you look at the other squads, because no one's ever done the Grand Slam anyway, so I thought that one was more defensible, but unfortunately, it just got added to the pile of the other outrageous ones. And so, you know what? I'm going to totally admit here, because this is not only a transparent awards process, I am a transparent person as much as I don't pretend to think other things or lie. So what I'm going to say is I had a similar reaction to some of the other people watching in the industry and more importantly, fans at home, which is the first thing that came to my mind because of the reasons I just theory crafted as to why someone might want those people to win was, holy fuck, it's rigged. 
There's two ways. Either the other panel members lied to me and they said they weren't interested in voting for this person or didn't make a case for them and then all just went away and voted for it very cynically. Or it was literally rigged. The, the East Watts Award took our awards, moved one here and there, and suddenly someone won who shouldn't have won. As a result, I was outraged. I literally went up to the people from the Esports Industry Awards, told them I'll never come to this awards again. I quit. I'm not interested in being involved. Now, what was very comforting was, first of all, they essentially were able to talk me down by saying things like, we'll totally open the, this up to investigation. Like, we'll, we'll look into all the metrics. Like, this definitely isn't rigged. Like, uh, we understand if you think that. More importantly, other members of the panel, other people I consider very legit in esports and I do not think would ever take part in rigging something, had a similar response. And we're like, what the fuck is this? Like, how can we be involved in this? Like, we're putting our names on this, our integrity is involved. Now, when I calmed down and looked into it and did my investigation, I actually was able to come to some conclusions, which actually make sense of most of these awards, quite frankly. First and foremost, the tweaking of the awards process in terms of how it's voted for, the breakdown of 75% coming from the panel and 25% coming from the fans has changed apparently from the first ever awards. And now as a result, the fan vote element that's supposed to be 25% is now too powerful because supposedly in the past, what it actually did was all the fans votes would just be acted as though they were one member of the panel. So even if they voted someone crazy, we could all overrule them. Now with it being like 25%, we'll think it through, right? So for people, PC player of the year, imagine because this year there's a very unusual circumstance where there wasn't like an obvious person like Simple last year, there was Simple and CS and then League there was Caps and then Sinatra and Overwatch League, you could easily see how among the panel, these three might have split a lot of the votes on the panel and therefore if Booga was say fourth or third on anyone's poll or fifth, the fans voting almost overwhelmingly for Booga because it's Fortnite, he's got a massive profile. There's much more fans, I'd imagine, voting for that game than voting for something like CS. He could then get enough points to even nick first place by a small amount. Now, what gave me the smoking gun that I think this is what happened, using a bit of lateral thinking, was I looked at the other awards and I looked for one that would suggest this took place. And I think I found it, which is in Host of the Year, they had... Third place was Nevi Estefan. Now, this is a Brazilian host who speaks primarily in the Portuguese language on her broadcasts. And therefore, people like me, I've almost never seen her. I don't watch Portuguese language broadcasts. I know most of the panel didn't know who this person was. Again, we're just not in the Brazilian scene. But... Brazil has an enormous amount of esports fans, very, very passionate and very, very enthusiastic and nationalistic esports fans who I could totally see if she put their link on her Instagram. She has a lot of followers. The social media generally, she has a very wide following and it's all specifically Portuguese people as far as I can tell or Portuguese language and Brazilian people. I could totally see how they could vote for them. By the way, they're absolutely welcome to vote for whoever they please. So I think this gives away that it was the fan vote element that overpowered this not that it was rigged, because for example, if it was rigged, some of the other awards actually seem very bizarre. Like for example, why would Henry G win Caster of the Year from Counter-Strike, a game that yes, a lot of people appreciate, but doesn't have nearly as many fans as games like League of Legends, Fortnite, etc. Meanwhile, who was second and third in Caster of the Year? Well, second was Papa Smithy, one of the most popular, well-loved League of Legends casters, and someone who's just retired from broadcast and becoming a, a backroom executive, uh, actually a front office executive, and as a result, I think it would obviously have been, if you wanted to be cynical, loads of fans would vote for that person. And this is a scenario where it would be a great way to send them off, right? Then look in third place, Courage, a guy you'll know from games, like all the, a very popular streamer, works with 100 Thieves. So someone like him could have gotten the award easily. Like that's someone I think they would even probably like to win if, if they had a choice in it. Then let's go to the fact of that. What did a lot of people say who weren't fans of League of Legends that made it rigged? Well, they said, Riot Games winning means shows it is rigged. Fuck Riot Games. What? The sexiest company wins. Oh my God, Riot Games, that baby game, League of Legends. You know what? I'll tell you right now. I voted for Riot Games as game developer or publisher of the year or whatever the fuck it was. I voted for the League of Legends World Championship as the best event of 2019. I didn't think CS Guachi had any events that in all factors bested it. I didn't think TI was as crazy this year as it has been in some of the past years. Thought it was just a very good tournament, but not as good. I think Riot actually did a lot of interesting things with LEC this year and changing the game up and making it to some degree, for fans at least, more interesting. I have my debates as to whether or not I feel like certain strategic components. So I voted for them. Now, the imagine 
imagine the the notion I'm biased in favour of riots is ludicrous if you know anything about the esports industry. This year alone, I published a piece where I showed, I'll put it up here, a video where I explained that Riot absolutely fucked me out of a, a, a casting gig that in theory was nothing to do with them. And then in the video, I go through all their sins and all the fucked up shit they've done. I'm also someone who thinks the sexism stuff was disgraceful, things I knew about for a long, long time, but I'm not an investigative journalist. It wasn't my position to necessarily be able to expose those things. I know these people, some of them are pieces of shit. There's also some cool people there. There's not sometimes the decision makers. So the idea that I'm voting for them out of bias or some industry angle is ridiculous. Like I vote for them because I think think actually on the surface of what the award should be judged on, they were the best in those two regards. By the way, little detail you might know it, might like to know, this person didn't get in, but even for Esports Hall of Fame, I personally, behind the scenes, put forward someone who literally has cost me millions of dollars. Maybe one day I'll tell you that story. Not one I've been particularly interested in telling in the past. I'm not one of those crybabies. So in terms of the process of what went on, Yes, more tweaking needs to take place. It's actually going to happen. We've already started a discussion among the panel for next year of things to look into, how to fix this. The eSports Awards themselves are very open to change. They understand this has to be a legit, authentic award. Otherwise, all the big names are going to go and it's just going to be like the Game Awards and those bullshit ones that no one really gives a fuck about unless they win, right? Now, in terms of the slights and the allegations from other people, I understand people are angry. I was angry myself. But I'll just say this. First of all, when you know the panel, as I explained in my other video, the notion that we're the ones rigging it is crazy. It's one thing if you say the awards do, but the notion that we are or that we're biased in some sense, I think you're just pathetic if you actually believe that. Go ahead and put forward some evidence in that case or make a compelling case. I dare you, motherfucker. Now, in terms of the idea that this could be going on and we could know about it, there's another thing I'll say right now. If I ever, and I told the esports awards this to their face, if I ever discover any wrongdoing impropriety, rigging, any of it, I'll not only leave, but I will then immediately expose them. I told them that directly, and I even have said to them and many others in the past, don't do business with me if you are in any sense corrupt, because if I discover you are corrupt, I will expose you, and I will join with others exposing you if that's in fact the case. So fuck the implication and direct accusations in some cases that people like me are corrupt and we're involved in that way. Now, in terms of Richard winning, I thought that was pretty cool, especially because he got to put it to all the little rats from sites like uh, fucking Polygon and Kotaku, who are a never-ending sewer pipe of shit spread across esports, and it's sad that people ever even linked to their pieces. That was by the by, though. I thought overall, aside from some of these awards, generally the right people tended to win, people who deserve to be celebrated. I thought it was a brilliant occasion. One thing, actually, that I've never really noticed until this year, because now we've had a few of them, is it's also a brilliant occasion for people in the industry who all respect each other's work and are at the highest level to actually meet up again. We used to, back in the old days of esports, when you'd have five different games being played at one IEM or something. Nowadays, though, our dream hack, nowadays that doesn't really happen. We tend to be at our separate events. So I agree, there were certainly some problems. Some people won this year that even as a panel member, I do not actually think deserved to win or should have won. Or it was unfairly skewed by the fan vote. But I do think that they will be open to changing it. I'm pushing for it myself and I will never allow any even hint of corruption to exist as long as I'm involved with that awards. This video was kindly supported by Alexander Rao, Blunt Smoking Anus Destroyer, Dean Koskley, Dean Tanglis, Ho Chi Mao, J Dobbs, Mohammed Al Abdul Razak, Nate DOGG, Patrick Ribeiro, Tobias Bernasconi, Who the Fuck is Viathan, and special thanks always goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Would you like to ask me a question for my monthly video AMA? Do you want teasers for upcoming content that I've got? Do you want to take part in a discussion with me? Well, if you would like any of these perks or to support my work, put your money where your mouth is and join the Screluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.